All right, so I got to call it the surgery center again. Um, we did a compressor here last week um, saying that the condensing temperature is getting too high. Um, they want 58 degrees in this room. Unfortunately, it's really hard to do with DX cooling, and they have a really old system up here. Ugh. Super old system, engineered air. I think it's about 30 years old. And they gotta run water on the condenser to keep the condenser temperature down, but what I found was, I found non-condensables in circuit two, and I'll show you how I did that. Uh, it's a super hard diagnosis, so. Let me turn all my stuff on. Got that DL. 429, great meter, super good. My testos. See what we got. So, circuit two, this is the one that we replaced. You have R22, 87 over 304. Circuit number one is the original compressor. We have 75 over 400. 400. So, this is at 300. But we have 250 degrees coming out of the compressor. This is at 400. We only have 230 coming out of the compressor. So, it's not compressing the way it should and putting the heat to that condenser to be rejected. So, what I did, just to get them by for now, I mean, you gotta make do. Yeah. I rigged up some water jets to help keep that fucking condensing temperature down because we're not gonna be back here. We can't shut the unit off until this weekend. Uh, until there's no surgery, so it's got to run like this until this weekend. Amps 9.8. Check your amp draw. That's on the new compressor. 7. And it's cool, all this stuff hooks up to the wireless, my Testos, my UEI, so I can go sit down in the truck and I can monitor my ambient, my suction temperature, superheat, subcool, T1, T2, my evaporator. So, and then with this system, your liquid line isn't gonna be coming off of the compressor. Your liquid line is gonna be over here. We got our sight glasses. So the system running as best you can. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out all the refrigerant out of circuit one. I'm gonna purge through with nitrogen and try to clear out anything that may be in there. I'm gonna throw some acid away in there, just in case. Pull a really, really good vacuum, a good nitro flush, two vacuums, you know, fuel on triple recovery, single recovery. I'm gonna do a double recovery on this one, down to 500. We're gonna let it go. We're gonna charge it up with 9.6 pounds of R22. And uh, I'm gonna do that this Saturday, and then we'll see see what's going on. Uh, another quick check: you can always check to see if your valve's bleeding by, because you get your discharge temp here. You could have discharge being bled into the freaking evaporator for a low ambient condition. This is for low ambient control if you want to operate your cooling. So what it'll do is it'll take this head pressure, feed it through, and keep your evaporator from freezing up. That's what this valve does. It senses the pressure off of here. Um, but we're, we're 100 degrees outside today, so we're not going to be doing that. Uh, TXVs, you can adjust these ones. They got the nuts. So I did a little adjustment on circuit one, excuse me, circuit two when we put the new compressor in. And that's what you're seeing right there. 
that one's running great. This one's running like shit. So, but that's how you diagnose non-condensables, and then you can watch your high side. See it? Just ticking. That's how you know you have non-condensables in your system. Right there, hands down. That is the best way to diagnose it. So, you guys have an awesome day. We'll be back Saturday, and I'll give you an update on this one. Uh, like, subscribe. You guys have an awesome day. Rock on.